All right, in the last module, we learned about some of the uh, features of vCenter Server that make it helpful in an enterprise environment, um, mostly high availability, uh, DRS, and you know the ability to, to move machines around, uh, virtual machines around to different hypervisors it is some of the features that are useful in um, vSphere. Uh, we're going to be learning about networking a little more in this module, specifically uh, distributed switches uh, distributed vSwitches. So I wanted to uh, show you some stuff uh, in my environment uh, to show you the, the contrast of how things could work differently um, without vCenter server. So in my environment I have uh, several several individual ESXi hosts that I manage with the ESXi host client. Um, I manage them individually because I don't have vCenter server. Um, so it, in my use case, it doesn't really matter. Uh, one, uh, almost everything I run in my lab is not mission critical. So in other words, if uh, one of the VMs dies or is inaccessible for a small period of time, my company's not losing millions of dollars in racking up um, bad press and whatnot from uh, customers. So in my case, I don't really need vCenter server. I can manage, manage everything individually. So uh, if you look, I have four different ESXi hosts. Um, as far as something like vMotion goes, uh, I don't have any kind of vMotion, let's move the, the, the running VM around. Um, but my VMs are on shared storage, so if I have a VM on one host, like this is my uh, ESXi 02 host, if I wanted to relocate this VM to another host, I just turn it off and then I can uh, unregister it and then I can go to the host I want to move it to and I can register it. So basically these VM files exist on my shared storage, my network attached storage, so then I can just basically go and find the files for that VM Open that VM. Wait, let me go find it now. Open that VM. It was reg registered to my host. So now I can find it. And I can turn it on. So is, is this as cool as vMotion? No, obviously not. V vMotion, when you combine uh, vCenter features such as uh, high availability and DRS, uh, make uh, a much better enterprise solution. But if you're just working in a small environment where downtime is a little more acceptable, uh, then, then you can do, do things similar to what you could do with vSphere without, without that. One of the issues we run into in managing the ESXi hosts separately with the host client instead of having um, vCenter server is the networking. If we look at the, the networking on my ESXi host, uh, this host has 11 networks to find, which, which is, isn't uh, too bad to manage. But during COVID, I was creating remote lab stations. So this host has 88 networks to find. This host has 85 networks to find. And then this host has seven networks to find. So the problem with what I just demonstrated of moving my VMs around, fortunately for the student 188 network, it exists on both hosts. Um, however, let's say I wanted to do the same thing with this other VM. My, I've never used this search before. Let's see if this works. Yeah, my student 40 network does not exist on both of these ESXi hosts. So if I unregister this, this guy here, and then go register it on my other host, oh, I gotta go pick it, yeah. If I go register it on my other host, when it registers,
and I go edit the settings, I get a warning. The VM is attached to network port group student 40 VLAN 3 that doesn't exist. So I'm like, okay, I'll just edit, edit the settings and go fix that. And then, so you see, it, it doesn't have the network that it was originally attached to. And then when I go, like, try to find student 40, it doesn't exist. So, uh, essentially, if I actually wanted to, to power this VM up and have it working, I would need to go to the networking, create the student 40 port groups. If we go look at my other, other host. I have four different port groups I would need to create um, in order for that, that to work as uh, expected. And uh, hopefully you, you can see that will be a lot of work uh, initially to get all those created on, on all the hosts, which is why they don't all exist on all the hosts. And then every time, say, I started needing to use these uh, remote lab stations again, every time I add a new host, um, that, that has resources, compute resources I can use, I have to go create those, those, uh, those networking components. So that, that's a downside of, of not having vCenter server if you're in a large environment. Because with vCenter server, you can create distributed switches, right? So you can go into to vCenter server, uh, go to the networking, go to your like cluster, your data center, and you can create a new distributed switch. I'm not gonna go through this because the, uh, the lab um, we're gonna do uh, shows you step by step how to do that. But once you, once you create the distributed switch, then you can um, add host to the distributed switch. You can add host to the distributed switch. And then when you go look at that distributed switch, sorry, go look at that host, then the distributed switch shows up. So now if I were to go, if I were to go to vSphere and create a new port group, um, that port group is going to show up on every host that is attached to that distributed switch. So obviously, hopefully you can tell um, it's a very big time saving in a very large environment if you have the vCenter server um, that you can um, manage the uh, central stuff and just attach it to all the other hosts. So that was a couple things I wanted to go over uh, before uh, you guys do this week's lab. So you can see, kind of get an idea of, of, yeah, great, we're doing all this stuff in vCenter server, but why, is it, why does it matter? Why is it important? Well, it matters and it's important because having that centralized management prevents you from having to go do the same thing four times if you have four hosts. If, if we had four hosts and we wanted all the networks to exist on all four hosts, we would need to go create it on each host. So, um, yeah.